Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Matt Davis. I'm going to be your host, uh, like I always am. Um, today, we're going to be looking at new features of the Allego software that were just released. Um, Asiya Gulabji is going to go through those with you. Um, so we are doing webinars on an every other week schedule. We have another one planned August 6th. We're trying to get a special guest in. We're having some, um, uh, some uh, scheduling conflicts right now, so I'm not going to mention who it is, but uh, look for that email uh, in about a week for the next, um, next webinar, August 6th. Along those lines, if you want to meet, uh, if you have something that's uh, going to take longer than a question, you want to meet with anybody here, um, we can set up a, a team to team um, video meeting. And the best way to get in touch with us is sales at neuronexus.com. And we can set that up for you. And then, uh, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Asiya. Thanks, Matt, and hello, everyone. Thanks for joining um, the new session of our LEGO webinar. Let me share my screen with you. So as you see, the title uh, is we are going to talk about a LEGO version 225. And to give you an idea of what would be the material that we are going to talk today about, is going to be we are going to go and review the previous functions that we explained in the previous versions, and it's gonna be very good and refreshing for those of you that even attended the previous webinar, or uh, right now you are the user. And for those of you that you didn't have a chance to attend our previous webinars, it's gonna be informative, but still I suggest you please go and watch our videos that we have on YouTube, and uh, Matt already shared with you the link for um, having access to those, pre, uh, those previous recorded webinars. And then after that, we are gonna talk about updates. I'm sure you guys are excited the same as me to see what would be the updates that LearnXS is offering this time. And then we are gonna have the section of question and answers, and I'm gonna be more than happy to answer your questions um, online. And also, uh, for sure, you can always reach out us at sales at to uh, with your questions and uh, our team are going to handle those for you. And so let's go and check the first uh, function of Nornex's uh, Allego software and it's going to be the probe centric feature of the software. But before that, uh, before starting that, let me come up uh, and uh, explain you what's the problem that we at Nexus have decided to uh, design this uh, function for you guys. So here, as an example, uh, in the picture, you see the H-Chain probe that is implanted, excuse me, that is implanted in the animal brain. And then each shank uh, has eight individual recording sites. And on the right column here, you can see that um, the uh, Buzaki group, actually this has been already uh, published in Nature Neuroscience, you see that they have grouped each individual shank uh, and because they were interested to look at the activity of their network at that specific location for that uh, shank. And uh, for sure, this uh, right column has been done uh, during offline analysis after recording, but it would be very cool if uh, during recording you can learn what exactly is happening in your culture or if you are doing in vivo recording, what's exactly happening at the recording side and what type of signal you are looking at. And for sure, if you are a researcher or electrophysiologist, you know that it's going to be very tough because you need to correlate the, uh, your electrode map with the header stage map. And when you are increasing the channel count, it's going to be really difficult to know exactly where your, uh, the channel that you're recording, looking at, is related to which recording site. And it's why that at Nexus we decided to help you guys for easier understanding of the activity of your network at the real time. 
And here you see by using two uh, features of electrode and monitor that in this video, I'm trying to show you how you can go and customize the header stage and the electrode that is connected uh, to your data acquisition system. And for example, you see you can select the port and here we have just two ports showing here because I'm showing that the simulated data or um, the data that here we are showing is just uh, for, for example, to show what type of electrode you can select or the header stage and then through the toolbox, you see I can uh, select the individual electrode or sort them according to X, Y or Y and X, Z. And then on the right side on the monitor tab, I, can, I have other functions that I can look at the magnitude, increase or decrease the spacing, and just design the way that I like to look at my signal. And for example, uh, right now I'm trying to look at these two individual electrodes that are seated on sh a second shine. I go to the tool, uh, section toolbar, uh, toolbars, and then I will select these two, and you see that immediately they're going to pop up on the uh, front side on the top side of my monitor and then if later I select I'm selecting the other two electrodes that are in deeper side and they're coming after the initial one that I have selected and even I can select or deselect them using the selection tool here and using the positive and negative uh, icons. And by using the sort tool XYZ, I can select if I want to look at all recording sites at the same depth. And then for sure, the one that are in the deeper region are gonna come top on the top view of my monitor and the rest of them are gonna come in the bottom. And here you see the same story that I just showed you in the previous um, slide. The, the way that Buzaki's group, they were interested to look at each individual shank and you see uh, the purple color here is related to shank one and then after that we have the rest of the shank that's uh, coming immediately uh, after that in your monitor view. And so you see how uh, easily you can track each, each individual recording site. And one of the other things that here I'd like to mention if for any reason you don't like to look at the activity of any of these shank, you can uh, remove this recording site from your view. However, still it, it's going to be in your raw data and later if you like to look back and check them, you still have this option to uh, look at them. So then uh, let's go for uh, the next function that I'm sure you guys are also aware uh, of and you know how much powerful uh, and um, let's say creativity this function is giving you. And that would be the filter function. And here we are defining the function at different levels. And at different levels, I mean that if this software gives you this option to uh, to consider these filters and affect the raw data, the way that you're saving your raw data, but uh, also give you this option to just look at them in the way that you want, but then your raw data is going to come with all information and all band and all frequencies that you are interested. And by using the different filters, you can choose uh, to select and look at the action potential or you can select um, the lower frequencies to check for local flow potential. And I'm sure the people that are doing behavioral studies or sleep studies, they understand how much it can be useful to play and look at the different, uh, you know, uh, like beta waves or gamma waves. It's going to be very easy to manage using this um, function here. And the other, um, let's say feature that is also one of my favorite features in Alego is that during recording, you can understand exactly, you can learn exactly about your spike. And what does this mean? It means that if I'm trying to implant and then look at my noise level, the signal metrics part is gonna be the best part that I can come up and check out each individual site 
um, noise ratio. And apart from that, it gives you option to look at the location that you're sitting. And in this video, and uh, in this function here, you see in the bottom, you can also have all the data uh, considering max voltage, the minimum voltage, or a standard deviation of noise, or any information that you're looking for your signal, it can be listed in this uh, function. And then later, if you want, you can also export uh, all this data and save it in the CSV format that you want. And one of the other things that I uh, like to mention here, you know, using this setting, uh, GR, you can also select the threshold um, that you like for selecting the signal or looking at the signal to noise ratio. And uh, you can select either uh, looking at the voltage threshold or going with the standard deviation of the noise, and then you can just uh, decide which type of uh, noise, uh, uh, which type of noise ratio you like to uh, look at. And by looking at this heat map here, when you get closer to the red, by visualization, you see it's very easy to learn at which area of your culture or your recording site you would be able to pick up the higher uh, signal to the noise ratio, or you're going to have higher signals. So let me um, walk you through the other two features that we already presented you. And for that, uh, if you have recorded your signal and then you like to get back and look at your signal to see what's the performance or what was the activity, you need to come to the system tab. And through that, you see uh, under, uh, on the bottom, you see it, there, it, it is all information that you need about your signal, the time that recorded, the duration, the format, and then here I'm trying to select one of the signals that I was interested to look at. And by selecting this uh, triangle button here, uh, I'm selecting that individual signal. So in this example, I selected two different recordings to just show you how easily and you, uh, uh, how uh, easy it is to check for the performance of your recordings at two different sessions. And here, for example, you see I open the monitor tab and I check signal one, and then how easily I'm switching from signal or recording one to the recording two. And this is going to be very uh, useful for the people that uh, are doing pilot study and they want to look at the performance or changing in the culture over a week. Or even if you are doing the uh, accurate studies, if you want to look at the increase of the firing rate by applying the you know drug or the type of experiment that you are doing, it's going to be very easy to handle and you know at the same time check for the activity that just happened in your network and compare uh, this for easy visualization. And then the uh, last part from the previous version that I'd like to just uh, mention is about how easy you can convert your recorded file to the other format for further offline analysis if you like to go and have a closer look uh, about your uh, recorded files. And you see here after selecting uh, the file that I want, I can different type like CSV, Next, and NWB that I'm sure all of you are aware of NWB and it's the common format that right now NIH is um, inviting researchers to come up with that um, format. And Nornexus is uh, honored to be the first company that is offering this, first, this format for uh, our customers. So I think we are good for now to switch to the new updates. Um, and for that, I like to start with the digital entry gate. So this function uh, is accessible by going to the system tab. And you see here, I'm scrolling down. And on the bottom, uh, you can see the function of digital entry gate that has been embedded. And then you can select it. And according to the peripheral that has been connected to your data acquisition system, that here uh, we are uh, showing uh, uh, zero and one because it's matched with the Smartbox Pro data acquisition system that we have here. But um, 
And then if you save it, then uh, when you are trying to sync your EFES data with other type of data like behavioral study, if you're looking at giving animals some task and then you like to see what exactly happened and the animal is doing the task and then at the activity of your uh, of your uh, of the signal that you're recording, then you think this right now is possible and also it's going to be very good for people that are doing other studies. So it gives the flexibility to um, sync your studies or your ethos with the other type of studies. And the other feature um, is about detection of your spike. So I'm sure um, uh, you guys are very interested to look at the mean waveform of your signal that you're recording. So here, please uh, disregard the shape of this because these are just simulated data that right now we are presenting to just give you the concept or uh, the approach that we have achieved. And uh, through that, what you see by clicking on your monitor, uh, you either, you know, by double clicking on the monitor tab or by uh, right clicking, you can reach out, this new window is gonna pop up. And then through the channel, you can go and select any recording file that you're interested to look at on time. And online and then through uh, and then you can select what would be the low back window or what would be the time window back that I want to look at that mean wave form of the signal and through that you can also decide what period you like this uh, window get updated and then you can set the pre threshold and uh, post threshold to look closer on your spike activity that is happening. And we have this event shadow here that maybe it would be the question right now for you guys why at our nexus we decided for this. So I'm sure um, you guys uh, know that most of people are coming with uh, giving some common or typical number uh, for this event shadow. But before that, let me explain you what's event shadow. Actually, event shadow is the time that you know that no spike is happening at that time. It means that that duration, you are preventing any spike to happen. And why we do this? Because we are trying to remove the possibility of detection of one individual uh, spike multiple times or as a separate spike again. And in this time, we are putting this duration, typically people consider something like 0 0.6 milliseconds. And according to that time, we are gonna say, after initial, uh, uh, after initial um, threshold crossing that we are making for, uh, we are looking at our signal, then in that period, we are not gonna, we, are, we have that silent period, and after that, we are gonna, uh, make this threshold crossing and then look at our uh, the signal that are coming. So this is very good if you can manage it yourself because you know in some condition you're you have uh, you're recording from some area that are coming from very high firing rates. Like you know if you are in a sensory uh, area of your brain and then you are applying a stimulation and you like to look at that activation or firing that happened then for sure you need to go with the smaller one. Or in some places or some area of the brain that is silent, then maybe you are gonna choose longer duration for this. So this flexibility helps you to learn more uh, during online uh, visualization or recording, you can, in real time, you can decide and check for your signal itself. And the other thing uh, about this is that you can select the threshold here. So what is, what's the benefit of this? So sometimes you're recording in very noisy condition. And if you set very high threshold or low threshold, you know, or considering the fixed threshold, maybe you're gonna miss some of the low amplitude signals that they were really signal. So it depends, uh, then it's good that you have this power that when you're recording, you also play and even, you know, decide to clear one threshold, the negative threshold or the positive threshold. So it is, it is, it's giving really very power uh, for uh, having this window here. And as I said, through this channel, you 
can select this, which channel you want to look. So the other things that's coming with the same, um, let's say, um, some characteristics, the same that I told you about this swipe uh, uh, window that comes, is the swipe grid. And what's that is actually the function that through that you can uh, give some average value for all of your channels at the same time. And automatically it's gonna detect all the signals and consider the same threshold for that. And for that, you need to go to this, um, uh, to this gear here, the setting gear. And after opening that, you are gonna select the port or the one that your video stage is connected. And you are gonna give that the standard deviation or the voltage that you like. I personally always like to go with the arbitrary uh, way of giving the threshold, not, uh, not going with the voltage. But it's up to you any way that you like or match with your experiment. You can select it. And then you see after selecting that, all your channel have been plotted and for visualization, you can easily see and track each channel that you want. And later, if I decide to change each individual channel, I can go to that specific recording site. And then I say, I want to change the threshold for this. Uh, Sites that I'm looking at that. And then I can either set the higher or lower uh, standard deviation value, and then I can look at the mean waveform or the activity of my spike that is happening in a culture in real time. So, um, and let me, and then the other uh, options that we have added for improving uh, the performance or the user experience when you, are, when you guys are using the software is that um, if you have used a logo and you did recording for that, you for sure you know that when you want to start recording, you have to push the streaming button and then from the streaming you have to switch to recording. However, right now it's very easy when you're, uh, when you're looking at your signal or even if you have stopped recording and then you want to start recording again, you just go ahead and push the recording button. You don't need to push the streaming and then recording. And another thing is about the data file table. As you remember, when you want to visualize your data or uh, convert your data to the other file of data, you need to go to the system tab and then on the bottom there was this data file. A tab that was all information about the recording that you have done. So right before you always you have to push the fresh button and then the data, the recent data, they, they're showing up to you. But right now, automatically the data are going to be shown there. And then the last but not least, the detection of the hidden stage for a smart box right now is automatic. It means that before when you were you were trying to change your hidden stage to connect it with different electra, uh, you had to manually go and push the scan uh, button on the system tab. But right now, automatically um, using the software, uh, the connection between the hardware would be uh, secured and you would be um, you would easily start your recording. So um, this, so today you saw that we walk you through the previous version that was also available uh, with the previous version of Olegu, and also we talk about digital intriguing that is very good for people that try to sync their data, their other type of data like behavioral or opto studies or imaging study, whatever, with the uh, uh, with their electrophysiological study, you can sync these two data together. Right now, we are offering this option. Then you can also look at your spike and then manage the threshold and uh, look at each recording file individually and set the, uh, by playing with the, that shadow event, uh, decide if you are in a high finding rate region or in the lower and come up with the uh, pre-threshold and uh, post-threshold features. And then we talk about the spike rate itself that also give you, uh, for those people that want to put the common 
uh, threshold for all the signal is also possible and automatically is going to do that for you. You don't need to go and manually select it. And then uh, we I just showed you how we have improved the user experience by adding um, automatically, for example, detection of the hidden stage or the rest that I just showed you. And for now, um, I would be happy to answer your questions. All right, thank you so much. I see ya. So um, a Lego was always made to run on the smart box, but now with some of the spike sorting uh, features, you can you don't have to use a smart box. Uh, you can run it on uh, separately on your own. So some very exciting features here. Uh, so I'm not seeing any more questions. So I'm going to go ahead and close this webinar. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, August 6th, we will be having another webinar, hopefully with a special guest. Uh, so look in your email boxes to see announcements on that. And thank you again, Asiya. Thanks, everyone. Bye.